Hey, thanks for joining me and the uh, dog in the background. Thanks for uh, joining in as well. Anyway, it's a, a beautiful day here. Got the uh, windows open in the uh, shop and uh, thought I would challenge myself. You're looking at a little five inch magnetic speaker, really has no value and you can pick these things up for uh, just a few dollars. But uh, I wanted to try uh, just rebuilding one again and uh, just kind of uh, refine my uh, knowledge and skills. Uh, in particular, again, another voice coil. The uh, former itself, I'm back to paper, and that's based off some feedback that I received from uh, one of my viewers. I had used aluminum before, did not create a uh, gap, and um, I think that has the possibility, it's my understanding, of creating a problem with the, uh, the magnetic uh, force between the uh, center pole piece and the voice coil itself. So uh, this little speaker is probably, uh, what, half a watt, one watt uh, capable anyway. And uh, you see I'm back to my playing cards. I cut out, it's right at a, I think a two inch uh, diameter spider. And I took a rubber uh, washer and I've uh, got uh, two of them, but they're actually cut in half. And I'll actually use some epoxy and uh, put them in uh, locations here, here, and here. And then we'll glue this uh, playing card down and uh, this will become the uh, spider itself for the uh, voice coil. Now stick with me if you're interested because um, I'm not going to put a, a normal speaker cone on the uh, speaker. I'm actually going to create it out of some uh, craft paper and also uh, create or try to create a uh, surround here as well on the outside edge with fabric and uh, just see what kind of sound quality we get. I don't have high expectations uh, but again it's just for uh, more fun entertainment and uh, hopefully I'll learn something along the way and uh, if so maybe it will add value uh, to something you guys are working on as well. So if you're interested, uh, stay tuned. I'll do a lot of this work uh, off camera and I'll provide some updates on the, uh, the techniques itself that I use to create the uh, paper cone and the uh, surround when we get to that point. But uh, we'll let this epoxy continue to uh, dry up here and cure for about 24 hours on the uh, voice coil. That's uh, 36 AWG and uh, just under 100 inches wrapped on there using my uh, coil winder, which came in very, very handy again. Okay, I was going to cut this up into two different videos, but uh, we'll let it roll here for a bit. There's the uh, rubber washers that I mentioned just a bit ago. Uh, cut those up, used some epoxy, and got those placed in. Again, they just act as spacers for the uh, playing card itself to reside on, which will uh, act as the spider itself. While I was letting the epoxy dry here, I took out the uh, microfiber that I talked about using as the uh, surround material and I was just checking what I needed for the uh, diameter itself. Um, here I just cut out a piece of the uh, craft paper itself just to double check my uh, size itself for the actual uh, fabric uh, surround that I'll try to create. So uh, what you see in front of you is nothing more than a waste. Um, here you can see I've got the um, uh, microfiber just on the uh, cutting board and I've got it taped down and uh, just cutting the uh, two circles, inner circle piece out and uh, the other piece itself, which is a little over, I think, uh, one and a half centimeters uh, wide. Here you can see I'm just doing a uh, dry fit itself for the uh, spider I created around the uh, voice coil and also uh, have my uh, shims placed. I tell you, these old speakers, the uh, the gap there is so, so narrow, I can only fit uh, two shims in, so hopefully that won't compromise the uh, quality of the uh, speaker down the road. There's a lot of great information on the internet on how to create your own cone, and uh, Nostalgia Air has one dedicated toward uh, speaker cones, so I would recommend you reference it as well. 
Here's the math, pulled out the old uh, TI-81, uh, first time in a while, and uh, just plugged in the uh, formulas. I've got everything in millimeters just to uh, keep things uh, simple and increase the accuracy. I mentioned uh, using craft paper, and you can see uh, here I'm just cutting out uh, a size larger than what I need. So I think I went 120 millimeters or so, just created a square in a, an X pattern, and the only purpose really for doing that is just to work in the center. Of course here, um, I don't need to uh, look at the diameter itself, I'm just splitting the diameter there, looking at the radius, so um, I just split up the uh, 103 divided by 2, and um, here I'm just using a compass and drawing everything out on the paper itself. The uh, second part of the formula itself, the 25 millimeters, again, that's just used itself to uh, create or understand what the angle would be of the cut. And you can see here I'm just measuring it out. You could use your ruler or, again, just pull your compass out. I'm just going over from my known location, 25 millimeters, and I'll connect that point back down to the center, as you can see here. And that becomes, theoretically, your cut line. Of course, I need to move that back over, so I've got an overlap for uh, creating, you know, a glue location for the uh, cone itself to attach itself to. The dotted lines now that you see that I connected here become the cut line, uh, but I think I got too aggressive with that, and I think I went back and redefined it or cleaned it up just a little bit. And you'll see later where it says new cut line. Uh, here I just took a punch out uh, that I have. Uh, I went uh, 5 eighths of an inch in the center, knowing that uh, is, is when I create the cone itself, the diameter of the center hole would uh, decrease. And I think 5 eighths or just a little bit larger there I had to trim was a uh, perfect fit for the uh, voice coil uh, former, as you can see. So up next, it's time just to cut everything out. I wasn't really concerned about accuracy, so I didn't use my circle cutter. Uh, just uh, freehand scissors, uh, cut everything up, and uh, I understand now the area that I need to apply some uh, contact cement on and uh, laid everything out, place the uh, contact uh, cement on, and uh, form the uh, cone, as you can see. There's a uh, form factor, and uh, here's a dry run itself uh, that you can see of the uh, new paper cone placed over the uh, voice coil. Here, a little epoxy placed on. We're letting everything set up, and uh, once it's set up, it'll be time to uh, take care of the uh, lead uh, dressing of the wires coming from the voice coil. Now, one thing I didn't do is take time to uh, put uh, you know professional leads on. I just uh, poked a couple holes here in the paper cone, ran those uh, underneath, and soldered them in to the. Uh, solder connections here. Okay, now for the uh, fun part and the exciting part, I'm going to uh, turn on my uh, audio generator. I've got everything hooked up here. And we'll start out by generating a tone around uh, 600 hertz. So let me flip it on. I've got the gain turned all the way down. And I'll bring it up. I think that just shows what's possible. Again, that proves that the uh, spider, of course, is functioning the way it should and the uh, voice coil is uh, working the way it should. And uh, just that small piece of paper on here, which is, uh, what do we say, three and three quarter inches. Um, it's uh, pretty amazing. Still want to work on that surround. So let me bring this up just a little bit. I would expect right now that the uh, higher frequencies would uh, be louder just due to the uh, paper cone and free space. Uh, it's around a thousand hertz. And uh, let's see if we can still hear this. That's 100.
More to come on the uh, surround. Thanks again for watching.